The Oriel for president, I mean chairman. 2011. If you don't vote for Leorio, you hate freedom. All my freedom-loving friends vote for Leorio. We want to choose Paristin, the ant lover. For real though, I want Paristin to win, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I love Paristin, he's the man. That's a man I cannot trust, but I know I cannot trust, and so I like it. Defeat X and X reunion. Maybe Paristin's defeat and Gon's reunion. Beans! Beans is the bean counter. Counting beans. Oh, he's in first place. We are choosing freedom and love. Carson's still in it. Played that really well, splitting the vote. Stuck his foot in the door. <laughs> Damn, what does this remind me of? Somebody who is campaigning but doesn't care but ends up winning? Uh, more importantly, sort of. Imagine facing life after the Chimera Ant arc. And this will fade after time. For the moment, they gotta feel just unbeatable. Like, do you know what we've been through? What are you gonna do to me with your human men? What, are you gonna turn into a motorcycle and have me ride you? God, I wish there was an alternate universe we could see where Hisoka was in the Chimera Ant arc. She's aware of it then. It has to be on Lucas' terms. It has to be Lucas' decision. Or else it takes a dark, dark tone, dark coloring. Right. It's this exact thing I was referring to that Kula has to sort of avoid narratively. There's such a major metaphor there. They really perfected that that look for creep factor. Why are holes in things so terrifying? So she would be allowed to be a Luka all the time if people just requested less? Is that... Am I reading that right? I'm not really sure what to make of the Luca something thing and the, the purpose it serves. Because Kalua says he loves something. My initial guess was Kalua being the other side of the way the family has expressed it, where it's something else, it's not family, whereas Kalua might see it as a part of a Luca. And I can think of reading for that, which might actually even apply to Gon, where if you love someone, it's not cherry picking elements of their personality or lives and either making that the whole thing if you hate them or pretending they don't exist if you love them. It's seeing the whole. Actually, this applies to a lot of conversations I've been having recently about Gon as a character from the audience's perspective. There are multiple levels of analysis, right? You can love or hate Gon as a character. You can love or hate Gon as a person. And I think what happens a lot of times in character analysis is they get a little bit conflated. So there's something really great about the character and then people fall into the trap of universally supporting everything that character does and all the writing for that character and everything that comes out of that character, a la Eren. You can love Eren as a character. You can love Eren as a person even and still think that some of his choices are questionable, let's say. In Gon's Collapse, you can love his character. You can love Gon as a human being and admire Gon as a human being and still feel that some of his actions or his outbursts in the Chimera Ant arc were not great. Or, I mean, just for argument's sake, you could hate Gon <laughs> and hate his character and think that his outbursts were justified. The whole spectrum is possible. This also, topically for this part of the show, applies to politics, where people get stuck, they get a little bit trapped supporting any one person or side, universally to where flaws are not allowed to exist, or the opposite, which probably is more common and maybe even more insidious. Nothing the opponent says is allowed to be right or have any truth. All that to say, maybe that's what's happening with Aluka <laughs> and something. <laughs> Honestly, this seems like the solution, the danger. Just have someone F off to another part of the world. But what about something then? I thought you loved something. Oof. Oof, that hurts. That sucks, man. He's exactly as dead as a living thing could possibly be. Seeing going like that.
I got a little bit impatient. Oh no! <laughs> okay, it's just powerful healing energy. I hope. All, is this all the dark energy that was inside Gon's body? It's just, you know, typical Zoldic behavior. Another rebirth. Oh, wow. Oh, they all felt it. Lyra can't feel it. <laughs> Classic. Gon knows. Ah, uh, Jing knows. Time to visit, maybe? Yeah, we heal Gon and then we start the villain battles, maybe. I wonder if Illumi makes it out of this arc alive. Kluo chose not to hurt him once. Oh yeah, you knew he'd be aroused. Oh, I thought it was Ahsoka for a second. It's very Ahsoka-like, no? Interesting that his hair... I mean, we can't see the end of the screen, but it kind of looks like Gon's hair when he did his dark Super Saiyan thing. I mean, I don't know where Ahsoka is, but I know he's aroused from whatever tree he's leaning on. This is good. You should be able to answer this, right? You can't do the Gon thing twice. That moment has passed. Oh, okay. You can do the Gon thing twice. It doesn't land the same the second time. Oh, if Gon walked in at that moment, that would have been amazing. Right, it's baked in. It's baked in. I didn't hear any applause. <laughs> Speaking of not being able to control your emotions. Why is anyone surprised with this man in, in, anymore? What are you, crazy? I think... Oh, weird. Why, why would anyone vote... Against it. I mean, there are about a billion reasons you should vote against it, but why would anybody vote against it? It's how they all came up. It's a system they know. Do you know how much I suffered through this endless series of Hunter exams? I want to see rookies suffer too. They shall suffer as I have suffered. Suffer and die. And then Hisoka busts in with his hunting license, and everyone's like, you know what, we should probably reform the Hunter exam. <laughs> so riled up. He's so great, he's so kind and benevolent. Right, for the chairman. But I have such an overwhelming duty. There's a lesson there. He's relaxed, unlike Cheadle. Can Cheadle see something clearly now? That's also a great strategic move because it effectively makes her de facto leader in a sense. You're trying to lose this thing. This is over. You have no more campaign. <laughs> he was just like 10 minutes off. Actually, he was surprisingly close for not being a god. Moral, and that's how Moral accidentally ruined Luro's political career. But yeah, this is more important. <laughs> that was epic. The crying thumbs up slow nod from Moral. That's gotta be a gif out there somewhere. Oh, he showed up. He just walked in. Oh, he's a little again. Did he get littler? My little gone. This little boy. We're gonna see the wake up and the tearful Kalua reunion, right? Oh, you're in the same ring as same room as Jing! Does this count as finding Jing? Right, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The political stuff. Leave Caesar to Caesar, etc. He looks so cute and <laughs> so healthy. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Lero just decided to exit politics. But doesn't that mean, uh, person, person wins? Wow, to see him happy like this again. 
He's been, he's being drawn differently, isn't he? Damn this air hug. I just got soaked. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it was awful. You were one bloody bandage. Literally almost broke his spine. <laughs> Paris and leading the clap too. Everyone loves going. Where's Kalua? I think he could turn this around, but he doesn't want to. What? Oh, it's a secret. Why? Interesting. Why? Yeah. Too great of a burden? Ooh. So interesting, because they have this long history of, like, who's going to sacrifice for whom. I mean, I can think of a power-based reason why he might not do that. It can't be selfish. And if Go knows Kulu benefits, and it becomes selfish. If he doesn't get credit for it, it can't be selfish. To that extent, at least. Well, what I'm trying to figure out is that it also makes sense just from a human perspective. And the complexity of their relationship and its history. One thing that comes to mind is that there's probably a question of where their friendship is right now. It would be nice to start on a clean slate and see where Gon is and what he does without the knowledge that there's a sort of debt lingering between them. Like, like, if Gon seeks out Kalua once he's healed and apologizes, what have you, that's easier to establish as pure. Also, man, this is such a nice full circle thing. I'm glad we managed to get this, at least in the animated episodes. Very poignantly timed with discussions of the Hunter exam, because I remember a time where Kalua was powerless to help Gon, specifically in the face of Illumi as an obstacle. This kind of wraps up that character arc, at least, for Kalua. He freed himself and the result is he's able to save the person that he cares about. I would like it for Gon to know. I figure he'll probably know eventually. But it also feels great that Kalua is not directly responsible for that. On that note, to throw it back to something said earlier in the episode, it was mentioned that Kalua has faced more difficulty upon freeing himself. He's more challenged. That feels right to me for a number of reasons. It's one of those weird paradoxes where we think the pain comes from things imposed on us or lack of choices, the lack of ability to affect things through merit. And there's definitely truth to that. But what's often missed in that equation is that maximal choice, maximal freedom, maximal responsibility is no pick it's a different kind of difficulty. It's an endless quest. You're aiming for this impossible dream and there's no more blame possible. There's no more excuses possible. You live and die by your own choices. It's the matrix thing of do you want to stay in the pleasant dream that, you know, it contains its misfortunes and you may not be content there. But there is sort of a comfort and a simplicity that comes from sleep. To become maximally awake is difficult. It's like getting blasted by light that sears your eyes until you can adjust to it. He's not God, after all. I mean, that's why she's angry, let's be real. She's angry because she's been beaten from the beginning, and she knows it. She's threatened by that. That's way back, that's before the punch. How'd you know Lyria was gonna punch him? He did that so Lyria would punch him in the face? That's some legit foresight. You're telling me this guy wouldn't make a good chairman? <laughs> He's clairvoyant. I see. So he didn't have the full thing from the beginning. He was just taking the, the moves of greatest potential power. He's still working. Gee, it's almost sort of nice. Oh, that's right. I, I really like this, actually. <laughs> yeah. This has come up a lot on the show. I feel this way, and I think this leads me to have controversial affinities or affinities for controversial characters like Hisoka, where like, man, they're god awful. But it's fun to separate into pieces. And the fact that they're relevant comes from a place of confidence and ability and wit and effort and hard work and dedication and follow through. You know, there's a lot of great things in there. And with the terrible stuff, they're not hiding it, which doesn't make it less terrible. But what really scares me is where people don't have great qualities, are not really that good, have sinister motivations, but mask it. They're just snakes in the grass waiting to bite your ankles. I mean, Pariston seems like he might fall under that category because he approaches everything with a smile. But like, even that, it's sort of transparent. Everyone's so aware of his nature and he doesn't even really, well, it's complicated. He hides his nature, but he doesn't hide his nature. You'd really have to not be paying attention to not pick up 
the sinister element of Parasite's personality. They all know it. I can think of a specific example. There was someone I was hanging out with for a while who had similar interests as me and we got along really well. And then there was like some investment thing we were talking about. And just by just complete serendipity, I was at a bar and I met someone and we started talking about similar topics. And I mentioned to this person I had just met that I had recently become interested in this thing because of a friend of mine. And he said, it's not so-and-so, is it? And it was my friend. Turns out my friend had scammed this guy. That was a wild experience for me. Meanwhile, there are people in my extended circle that I, I know are not overly fond of me, but it's fine because I could sort of see the landscape. Also for Jing and Pariston, there's that classic thing of your rival being your peer. There's respect there. Cheadle just solidly defeated, just demolished. Going for chairman. Why is Knuckle choking out? <laughs> what? What? Huh? Hold on a second. What is he owe money? Oh. 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 I. I don't know. I'm excited and scared. Oh, I gotta talk to my son. Did you? Maybe he's just awkward. No! Alright, we got a next episode, right? Thank god this isn't the last episode. <laughs> Maybe this whole time he's just, you know, he's afraid of being overly emotional. He did all this for that. Maybe he's just, you know, too sensitive. I kind of get that. I mean, that would be the... Man, am I gonna say this? That would be the most humanizing thing that could come out of this. A positive light that I can sympathize with. That's also very Hunter Hunter. Friends don't say thank you. It's connected to that. Like, I can't deal with the emotion of this. This actually... <laughs> This is weird to say here in this video, but the way I most clearly relate to that dynamic is from this. It's from doing YouTube and Patreon because people are so generous to me and I, I get comments and DMs from people who are thanking me and it's like, no, no, you have it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you know, I'm sort of awestruck by it in a way that is really wonderful and profoundly moving But a little bit uncomfortable if you know what I'm saying because of how impactful it is And then like I was joking about way back when about gift giving there becomes a cycle of self-doubt that ruins everything because you're like Oh my god, this means so much. I have to adequately respond with gratitude <laughs> But then that like short circuits the actual authenticity and you get wrapped up in anxiety about your response and so it ends up feeling like you were stilted in its delivery. So the outward expression of gratitude does not match the inner expression of gratitude. I think there's something like that in there for expressions of love and appreciation, thanks, between people, depending on the dynamic of the relationship. Like, there are some people with whom it's easy and natural, and there are some people for whom it's there just as much, but it would feel weird to bring it to light. Thinking optimistically and outside of some grander clairvoyant plan, some very specific Nen purpose or whatever, Jing just might feel weird, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> you might not know how to handle it.